What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. Today we're going to be installing a new part, which you guys could probably tell by the thumbnail and the title on this video, that this part is pretty much required if you're going to be running a bigger wheel and tire setup on your Bronco. This is the new wheel and tire setup on the Yeti Bronco, which we have 37s on there from BF Goodrich with uh, 17 by eight and a half negative 30 offset wheels. So these are aggressive, and so this is what they look like on the normal Sasquatch flares. You can see how it pokes out just a little bit, which is exactly what I wanted. I'd say probably three or four inches actually stick out past the flare. So this is really nice. I like that look. However, it does rub down here, so you guys might be seeing that on the sidestep. I'm going to make a video in the future cutting that sidestep and actually moving it back a little bit, so we'll clearance that. But up front, we actually do not rub at all. Nothing on the bumper, nothing down there. So. This is actually a, a pretty good setup with the three inch lift. So I kind of, I did some research to figure that out. The only thing though, is that the wheel and tire setup is substantially heavier than the stock Sasquatch wheel and tire setup. So these are substantially bigger and heavier than the stock factory Sasquatch wheel and tires. Those ones are about a 315, 70, 17. So they're not a true 35. It's right under that. I think like 34 inches uh, tall, but those weigh together with wheel and tire about 88 pounds. These weigh, I think, 77 pounds, just the tire alone. So we're pretty close there as far as like just tire versus the wheel and tire of the previous setup. Then you add, I think, a 34 pound wheel setup. So in each corner, we're rocking about 110 pounds, which is substantially bigger than the 88 that we were talking about. Not necessarily great for gas mileage, not necessarily great for anything performance wise, except for a lot more rubber on trails and we can deflate very, very low. So. Comfort on trails is ultimately what this was used for, um, and that's why I decided to go with beadlock. But I did do all five. I did get the factory spare, or the, uh, the full size spare for the fifth. But the big thing is this aluminum tailgate is really a weak point on these Broncos. Now you have to think we did have an 88 pound spare tire, which is a lot of weight already on the back. Well, that thing was actually rattling and shaking a little bit, and I can hear it while driving. So the factory setup was already rattling. Imagine now that we add 30 more pounds to this thing, and that's not including other accessories, um, like a, a fold down tailgate table or anything like that. So it's a lot of stress right in the middle of this aluminum tailgate. What we have in the box and what we're going to be installing on the tailgate, it'll kind of make sense once I pull it out, but I'm gonna just say it. It adds a lot of rigidity to the tailgate. So that aluminum tailgate, it's not gonna hold a whole bunch of weight over time, especially with the tweaks and bends of off-roading. So this adds more structural rigidity to it by you know, clamping in a little bit to the factory uh, hinges while also just stiffening across laterally. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock off the, the back spare because that'll have to come off first. And then from there, we'll get into the install. Before we hop into the install, this is what negative 30 offset on a 37 looks like with the factory spare. So because I have so much offset, it's not actually rubbing up into the third brake light. Usually the third brake light like starts to bend and gets pushed in, which means you will have to probably extend this so that way people can see it. But right now, looking from the back, you can actually just barely see that. First step would definitely be to take off the spare. So we're going to knock these out really quickly. And then from there, lift this 100 pound spare off. Oh boy. Hands were not ready for this. Let's see if I can grab this. Glad the camera's recording. And we did it, but that was uh, not expected. You guys just saw me struggle to take that wheel off. It's, it's definitely heavy and that's why we have this. So I want to show you guys what it is that we're actually installing before it gets placed on there and just kind of explain a little bit about it. So this is obviously going to go around the stock uh, spare tire mount and then this is actually the support. So different holes that you guys might be able to see there for uh, different tire sizes, which I'll explain. And it'll make sense once it's on there. But I just wanna talk about the packaging and overall quality. Um, one of the things that in maybe Hammer Performance's video, you might have seen it, it's gloss black. Now it's this satin powder coated black. This stuff looks like it's really quality, like the way that the uh, powder coating is done. It looks like everything is nice and evenly coated. Um, I've ordered tons of powder coated parts in the past for the Mustang. And this stuff looks like it's gonna be um, nice and thick all the way around, even the edges, because that's sometimes a spot where things might get light. This one, not the case. Uh, and then a couple other things that we have here. This is the accessory bracket. So this will actually go on to the backside right here. This is what I mean by the 37s. You'll have different uh, holes for the accessory arm. But this accessory arm will actually be able to fit Roto Packs, which is a brand that does like those spare tires and, or uh, 
spare water, spare gas, things like that. Um, but one of the things and why I chose Hammerbilt for this, because let's be honest, they're not the only ones with one of these supports. But the thing I really liked about theirs is the modularity between these brackets. So you can actually maybe even make your own custom bracket off of the side of this. Um, or you could put tread or uh, traction boards, whatever they're called, roto packs. And I even have an antenna slash flag holder. So I'll be able to run, you know, like an American flag or an antenna or maybe an orange flag if I go to the dunes. So all of that stuff is included here that I got. So I really like that about the uh, the kit. Lastly, the other thing I really like about the hammer built uh, piece here is the logo. So you guys can kind of see it there in the bottom right corner. So right here, uh, it's not like super intrusive and their logo isn't like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Some of these off-road logos like are just like shredder and gnarly thrasher. Like I don't like that stuff that doesn't really fit me. This logo is kind of, cool to me. I really like how it looks and it's kind of small. It just says hammer built. So it's the shop that built it, right? The only thing is I think ordering the spare tire extension or the third brake light extension is separate. So I forgot to order that. So I'll have to place that order, but it looks like it's very simple to uh, reinstall that and kind of add that piece on. But the main thing that I really want to do, because honestly with my offset, I'm not hitting up against the spare light or the third brake light on the spare tire. Um, the main thing is I want to add rigidity to this aluminum door because I do not want that thing to, you know, buckle or crease like some people have when they've gone off-road. If I had the third brake light extension, we'd actually be disassembling here and adding that piece here to extend this up. Don't have that, so we'll do that later. But the next step is we're gonna take off the uh, factory spare tire holder. This thing's actually like a composite plastic, which is pretty surprising. So as I'm like yanking on and stuff, it's actually really surprising that this thing, uh, this plastic piece is all what holds on the spare tire. So kind of crazy there. We're definitely gonna be adding some rigidity by utilizing these bolts, adding a big steel plate that is uh, spaced offset on this spare tailgate um, or on the tailgate of the spare. So it's gonna add a lot of rigidity. I've said that probably 10 times now, but the first step is we're gonna use a 14 mil and take off all eight. No, it looks like six of these black bolts to let this thing hang. It should be the last one. So let's hold this up. Here, we'll take this off. And for now, we'll just let that dangle. Next step that is absolutely critical is before you take off these T40 Torx bolts, you're going to want to shove cardboard or foam or whatever you have underneath here. So I have a couple pieces here, one here, and then there's a few down here as well. You can't see that's not in the frame, but I wanted to make sure that these are nice and tight in there. You don't want them to be easily moving around. You want it to actually support the weight. So these in there are actually shoved pretty tight. Like I had to really compress them to even get them in there. So that's how you'll know it's the right uh, tightness in there. And from there, um, then we're gonna use a T40 and take these off. This is to actually help keep everything in alignment. This is the step where it gets interesting, right? Cause we wanna maintain the tailgate alignment. The biggest step here is just do the top two, right? We're just gonna undo the front or the top two on here. And I'm definitely gonna be taking off some paint in here, just that's the way it is. The way I'm doing this is I'm actually going to tape on the conical or conical spacer, and we're gonna hold this up. Uh, this is where you're gonna have the most chances of scratching your car, so this is where you wanna be careful. The thing I'm about to do is just lay it on uh, to this side using a microfiber to hold it. So I'm gonna kind of drape that over my tailgate there. Saw someone else do that and it kind of worked for now. And from there, we're just gonna thread on the top before we do the bottom, uh, so that way we don't mess up our alignment of the tailgate hinge and the, ultimately the tailgate. Now because we have these hanging and we have the microfiber, we can actually pivot off of this. And from there, we'll have enough room to back these out. So I might actually have to not use an extension to get more room, but you should be able to use a lower uh, profile socket and be able to pull this right out. Now that we have the conical spacers back behind here and we just have these threaded on by finger tight, right? So they're pretty loose. We can still move around. The next step is actually going to be reinstalling this uh, factory tire carrier. So we're going to go ahead and do that and we're gonna use the supplied hardware to do so. We have all of these hand tightened. We're going to go ahead and use the gun, but I'm not gonna sit there and ugga dug it to death. We're just going to make sure everything is nice and tight, so kind of work our way around. I just don't want to get anything pinched. Make sure our wires are good. And then we will have everything pretty much nice and supported. Then we'll add on our accessory bracket here.
good there. Next thing I will install, and you'll see the hardware is taped to it, but we're going to be installing the accessory plate, which you can see a bunch of different hole setups here, depending on what size spare tire you have. Uh, we have a 37, so I believe we're actually gonna be the furthest out, uh, but I'll go ahead and verify that really quickly before I install it. But you have a bunch of different options here, and this arm will allow you to mount a bunch of different accessories. Next piece that we're going to install is the WeBoost kind of antenna or flag mount bracket. So this is another nice accessory here. One thing I want to notice is look at how nice those embedded threads are. Super clean. It's also on uh, the actual bracket here that we installed this onto. And as I'm like bumping on stuff here, it's very stout. There's no wiggle here. Very high quality all in all, like even the, the threads versus the powder coating. There's no powder coating in those threads. Everything looks high quality. Recessed head of the screw will allow it to sit flush. And these are the little things that make this just, oh, I lost my screw. And I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that they actually put some thought into it and want this thing to be used and abused. So shout out to Hammer Performance. I'll have the link down to this stuff down in the description below. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it with the spare tire installed. So right here is the finished product. And honestly, this thing is stout. I'm rocking the whole freaking car just by grabbing the weakest link, which would be the furthest out. So that's very strong, that's promising to me, and I can't wait to throw some accessories on. Oh boy. <clears throat> this would suck on a trail. I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> not like. <clears throat> oh, I see you stud. There we go. We're on. Okay, we got them on. Now, let's throw the lug nut on so it doesn't come flying at me. But here's what it looks like all done. And I showed you guys some of the tips there. If you have a buddy, it would make it a lot simpler, but the tip with the tape on the spacers and making sure you only do the top and then put those in before you do the bottom hinges is critical while also supporting the bottom edge. That's really the major thing, the biggest worry about this. Other than that, it's all hardware and bolting and everything together. Things to look for though, because obviously Hammerbilt isn't the only one that has a tailgate support. Um, there's other companies out there and I'm not gonna like sugarcoat that. There are other ones out there. Hammerbilt's really not that much more than those. It's very competitively priced while you also get very thick steel, very high quality uh, powder coating. You get great customer service. I mean, Tyson, the team there have been really great all the way through and through. Um, also, I haven't ever seen one that has another mount for like a flag or for WeBoost or anything like that, as well as the Roto Packs. Um, I've seen them where they wrap around the tire like a ratchet strap and people put traction boards and Roto Packs other places, but I haven't seen one on the actual uh, tailgate support bracket. So that's something really cool. The other thing is, like I said in the very, very beginning, was the logos. The Hammerbilt logo looks cool and it's honestly it kind of blends in, which I like. I don't like when things are just super contrasty. And the fact that this is just satin black, it matches my vehicle very well, although I have the black uh, Bronco badge here. Everything else is kind of satin black. Even my wheels are now satin black, right? So it brings everything together. And then ultimately that's probably, I mean, as dumb as it sounds, I don't really need a gallon of gas as much as maybe a gallon of water at camp. And it's white. So if you guys don't know, the Roto Packs are red for gas, I think green for diesel, and usually blue is water, but for roto packs they have white. So I might throw on a white roto packs just simply because it, one, it matches the car, it matches the theme, but also water is pretty helpful for me and my girlfriend and my dog when we go out because usually I'm not doing three day treks across a desert or anything like that. I'm usually you know a couple hours deep into the forest and I fill up before I head out. The Yeti Bronco is coming all together. We have the the wheels and tires on there now. I do eventually want to change out these uh, side steps for actual sliders that are going to be able to support the vehicle if I hit some rocks or whatever and I won't damage anything. So I'm going to be trying to find some of those. I have a couple in mind but I might even get some locally fabbed here in Sacramento. But because I'm currently rubbing on these, I know a common thing is to remove this cap right here and then slice off a little bit of the, the actual side step and then reinstall the cap. So I'm gonna do that because ultimately anyone who buys these off of me or whoever I give them to, they're probably gonna need that as well because I think the 17s and 37s are such a good look on the Bronco and the bead locks and everything. It just looks so good. And I like how it pokes out a little bit, just looks nice and aggressive when you're driving. 
And yeah, I, I'm just into that. I really like the look of having a bit more offset versus being tucked underneath and looking kind of tall and skinny. So on that note, that means that my stock Sasquatch wheels and tires are going to be for sale. So if you guys have me on Instagram or leave a comment down below if you're interested, if you're in the Sacramento area or close enough, we can maybe make something work out. But I am selling all five. They have 2000 miles on them, so they're pretty much brand new. No punctures or anything like that. They are dirty, but I will clean them up before you guys get them. Uh, but these are the stock wheels and tires for the Sasquatch. They are bead lockable, so the current ring on there is how it comes factory. It covers all the actual holes on there, but for $700 at Ford, you can actually buy the real bead lock rings and turn these into bead locks, just like what I have on my vehicle right now. For the stock Sasquatch wheels and tires, what I've been seeing online is from like 24 to 2700. So right now what I'm asking is $2,500 picked up here in Sacramento, has all the TPMS, has all five, 2000 miles on them. You're basically getting brand new wheels and tires and yeah, everything is all set up for you. So if you're in Sacramento or close enough, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on Facebook, whatever, find me somehow, leave a comment down below and maybe we can make something happen so that way you guys can be rolling around on my old Sasquatch wheels and tires. And then ultimately, if you wanted to, turn them into real beadlocks as well. The mod in today's video is honestly super necessary. Even if you do pick up my Sasquatch wheels and tires or you just have a stock Sasquatch, I feel like you should put this bracket on there because I've been seeing some posts on the forums and on Facebook where people are tweaking their tailgates and some even bent their tailgates. And mine, even driving around on the roads and doing light off-roading, has already started creaking and rattling, even with those stock Sasquatch wheels and tires. So I wanted to put this on ASAP. So the wheels and tires got put on yesterday. I threw this on today because I did not want to risk it. Even if I hit a pothole in the middle of the freeway, I didn't want to tweak my freaking tailgate and then wait months for parts and deal with that whole headache. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>